Welcome to Texit Tutorials. Today we are going to cover a very important property in CSS called display. We will talk about all the possible values of this property and we will go through some example to understand how each value behaves. And we will also do some coding using a code playground called JSVIDO. So let's understand what property display does. HTML elements are actually rectangular boxes and display property decides how the box is going to behave. This is how you write display property in CSS. In this example, block is one of the value of display properties. Now let's quickly look at some of the other most used values of display property and I'm not covering all the possible values, I'm just gonna cover all the main ones. First of all, default value defined by CSS is actually inline. However, browsers have something called user agent style sheet, and it has its own default values, which actually shadows the default value defined by CSS. Now remember, each browser will have its own user agent style sheet, which means that this default value could differ from browser to browser. Now remember, not all the browsers would have huge differences, but there will be some differences. So for example, uh, CSS defines display default value to inline. However, Chrome changes to block in order to look at all the defaults in Chrome. It's user agent style sheet. You can refer this uh, now let's look at the first display property value called block. Okay, now let's just jump into example. Uh, uh, we, let, we're gonna do some coding. Uh, we're gonna use this uh, website, very special website called jsfiddle.net. Um, and you can actually try it, register for it, and it's really it's free and it's amazing because you can actually write your, you don't need any, uh, uh, you don't need any web server. You can just test your code um, here by writing your HTML here, CSS here, JavaScript here, and then when you click on the run button, it actually displays your H, uh, results here. So I'm going to create uh, an element here, a div, and I'm going to have value x. I'm going to close this div, but I'm going to give here a class, uh, class equal to x. So I have a content x and for that element also class is also x. And I'm just going to copy and create a three, three more element but I'm going to give each element a different class x, y, and z and content is also going to be different. Now I'm going to use this class to give each element a different style. There will be some common style. For example, I can say um, x, y, and z. All three elements I can say display block. And I'm also going to have a font color, which is actually color white and I'm going to have font size um, let's say 30 pixels so it's a little bit bigger <clears throat> and font size equal to 30 now I'm going to give each element different color background color so background color First element, I'm just going to give a background color red, and I'm just going to copy it again so we can speed up things. Uh, the second element, which is Y, I'm going to give a background color green, and the third element, blue. And I'm going to run now. So when I click on this run, Oh, I need to have this Z. Oh, I'm gonna click again. Okay, so as you can see, I have three three element here. 
X, Y, Z. <clears throat> and display block makes it look like a block. As you can see, they're piled up. That's the behavior of display block. Elements are piled up like this. And if you, if you notice something else, the, the width of the element covers the entire area of the, of the parent. So that's, that's the behavior of display block. Next value we're going to look at is uh, inline block. In order to do that, all we have to do in this example, in this previous example, is change the display block here to display inline block. And if I run it again, see what happens. As you can see that they are inline blocks, which means they are, instead of piling up, they are now side by side. The height is the size of the content, and the width, it's also the size of the content by default. And you, you will also notice a space between the two elements. It's like about two pixels or so. Uh, I'm not going to discuss why there is a space between them. Um, there are ways to remove it, and it's a it's a it's a different topic in itself. Uh, but all I want you to be aware of is that that there is a space between, so you can expect expect it and not wonder why is it happening because of you did something wrong or not. Okay, next value we are going to look at is inline. Okay, for that we also going to look at the previous example. And all we have to change here is instead of inline block, we are just going to say simply inline. And if I run this example again, you notice something different. It's that the space between the element kind of goes away. So now the elements are bumped to each other. And actually, there is a there is a one pixel space on the top which you can't see right now. But there is not much difference in this case. However, in order to see the difference, I'm going to do something else here. So I'm going to add height and height and width. I'm just gonna add height to 200 pixel, and I'm also going to. Okay, and I'm gonna run it again. There is no effect on, on the element, even though I changed the height and width. But let's say if I change this back to inline block and it rerun again, as you can see the height in inline block, it's actually considering the height and the width that I put in. But as soon as I change this to inline from inline block to inline it ignores the height and width so that's the main difference between inline and inline block an In inline block it actually takes the height and width that is given to it and in inline it ignores it completely okay so I'm going to save this example here um, and so if you go to this particular URL uh, you will be able to actually uh, look at the example and play around with it. Next display property value we're going to cover is uh, display none. We're going to look at the previous example and we are going to just change uh, display value from inline to none. And uh, when I would run this, all the elements disappear. That means Display none completely hides the elements. Basically on load time, it ignores completely, like it's not there. You must be wondering, why do I have to hide the elements, right? Why do I have to use the display none? If I want to hide it, why do I even write it, right? So, well, there are many reasons why you would do that. Um, I will give you one good reason. Let's say if you have uh, two pages and one view and you want user to be able to toggle between the pages. So you can hide one and then show the other 
and vice versa. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and provide a constructive comment. And if you have a question regarding anything that I've covered in this tutorial, please feel free to actually email me or provide a comment. And if there is any topic that you would like to be covered, uh, then just email me and uh, I will be able to provide a tutorial on that topic within a, a week or two.